welcome to the video. Yeah? You guys sit right in my studio? This is uh, made by me, edited by me, loved by me, produced by me, written by me, by me. Uh, thanks everyone who's here and helped writing this video. Appreciate you, the truck and I, and the pheasant and I. Appreciate you, and we uh, hope you enjoy the film. <sighs> Logan was 20 when I first met him. The only reason I really remember that is because he turned 21 during Iowa week. I've known Logan my whole life. He was almost nine years old when I was born. But uh, when I met you in September 2018, you were 21 years old. I was a little 18 year old. I met Logan when he was about 21. I believe 21. I've known Logan since May 31st, 1997. I'm his mom. Me and Logan met when he was almost about four. Uh, I don't think either of us remember it, but we've been bros ever since. I met Logan basically when he was just born. My birthday's on May 28th, his is on 31st, hence three days older than him. Uh, but that's when I first met Logan, was basically zero years old. If my old man brain hasn't failed me yet, I think you were 20 going on 21 when we met. Pretty sure I met Logan when he was like 21, 22. Uh, I think I've known you for about four years now since you first walked into the case of eternity and uh, we got to meet that day. It was great with Trevor. I met Logan in the fall of 2018 when he was 21 years old. We met um, on the trip that Matt didn't get to go to in Bend and we've been friends ever since. So Logan and I were 18. We both met uh, at the dorms at Central Oregon Community College when we started going to school. When we first met him, he was 21. I think we met when I was, or when you were a junior in college. I was a sophomore. I believe you were 21 when I met you. I was a freshman just coming into college. When I first met Logan, I believe he was 20 years old. Um, I met Logan in the spring of 2018 when uh, he decided to join Acacia. I believe Logan was 21 when I met him. Um, we met at the frat. I have known Logan my whole life, so a whole 22 years. Wish you a happy birthday. Let you know that Grandpa and I are thinking about you and hoping you're going to have a great birthday. So I first met Logan when he was 20 years old. I meet Logan. I have no idea. This kind of feels like he's always been there. I met Logan when he was 20, turning 21. And I think the one of the good stories I think about with us is when we climbed to the top of Dog Mountain and there was a bunch of snow at the top. We didn't expect it. And you had two crampons and we had to split one so we wouldn't slide down the hill. Or mainly the weekends were when you would carry me to my dorm because I couldn't even take care of myself and helping me through Rush and all the, all the fraternity events my freshman year. I couldn't have done it without you. Consists of him introducing me to our chapter advisor, as because he's a fraternity brother of mine, and we went to his 90th birthday party together at Dutch Bros in Corvallis. My favorite story of Logan when I first met him is when I joined the house and in celebration, he showed me what a helicopter was. I never heard of it, he goes, I got you. He got up on the table, butt naked, and uh, rocked showed my- you a helicopter. <laughs> Showed me what a helicopter was and rocked my world. <laughs> it would be when we were in the Redwoods and we were throwing the axes in the tree and playing the princess game at nighttime. It's definitely when we would get home from school. We would always go home and uh, meet in the basement, watch a bunch of shows, Tosh.0, Ridiculousness. South Park, just whatever. And uh, this one specific time, we watched the new Kevin Hart special. And we went to go play catch outside after that, and we just couldn't stop laughing. My stomach was sore for about a week. My most recent favorite memory of Logan would be when we went to Melting Pot for my birthday, and we got to the entree, and you're, he didn't understand that you're supposed to cook the raw meat in the broth that they give you, and he took his first bite, we let him know, and just decided to finish the piece anyways. We're both living in Acacia, 
and came down at about 2 a.m. ish to grab a snack out of the kitchen. And it eventually became a small party. You were there, Bo, a bunch of other guys. And we were just talking about life, all our responsibilities, just shooting the shit. You were steward at the time, and we saw how hard it was for you vis a vis how hard it was for all your predecessors. Of all the ways to stare down a challenge and do well and still be humbled by the gap and how much there is still to care about, I mean, I take the kind of energy that you had that night with me every day. Uh, one of my favorite stories with Logan was probably learning to snowboard on Mount Bachelor together our first season, our first year we were there. Uh, or running into him randomly on the top of Blackview when we were hiking. We didn't even know each other there. So it was pretty cool to just kind of run into him doing something we both love. My favorite story of Logan um, comes from after initiation event. It was very funny because Logan's a kind of a mellow, like easygoing guy. Um, and after this event, we were all getting a little rowdy. Logan was very toasted and we were all shirtless um, and he decided to take it to the next level. and took off his pants, and not just his pants, he took off everything involved, um, and was just there, happy guy, completely naked, and I thought that was hilarious. And I gotta say, you're a lucky girl, Jacqueline. It is a brotherhood that we had uh, probably when he was 21, 22, somewhere around there, and we were all playing Rage Cage downstairs, and Logan, for whatever reason, decided to take off all of his clothes and just get but naked in front of everyone. It was pretty funny. All, all dudes, so, you know. But, yeah, we are just sitting around the rage cage table, and there's Logan just naked, dancing around the table, you know, swinging everything around. It was a pretty funny, uh, pretty funny experience. When we're walking to the football game, and you got a flask with you, and you, you snook it in your pocket so you can get into the game, and once we finally get there, we're watching the football game, you know, we're cheering, it's a good time, and you're just sipping on the flask a little bit, and then uh, one of the security guards, might have been a cop, might have been just a security guard, just comes down and grabs you and is like, gotta get you out of here, so. I don't know if that was necessarily funny, but it's definitely a memorable moment, and um, it was a great experience for my first time down, and one I'll never forget. When we were at your guys' apartment and we, you guys showed us what Catan was, or Catan, Catan. Oh, that was also another favorite. That was so fun. And we made sushi and drank rosé and Jacqueline and I got ham skied and I really thought I was gonna have the most brick. Didn't have it in the cards and Kaleo won. Yeah, beforehand, I guess I can tell us now, me and Logan made a truce that Jacqueline would not win, so. What? <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt the film, but that is absolute crap. Continue. I'm going to go with something more recent and um, just kind of speaks to Logan's nature of adventure. And during COVID, we were running short on toilet paper and like everybody else. And we had heard that... Um, a lot of stores were, were running on empty. And we had eight, sometimes nine people living in our house during that time. And so um, Logan and I went to one town, there was none in there. So we took off to the next town, finally found some, but each household was limited to two, um, two packages of toilet paper. So wearing our homemade bandana masks, Logan, we walked in and he took off one way. We pretended like we didn't know each other. And then um, he went and got the two and, and kind of made eye contact saying, I got him. So then I went and got two and um, it was like our fun little, um, you know, fun little adventure. We were both laughing so hard about it. And that's what I love about Logan is his zest for life and adventure. Uh, it was like a Saturday night maybe. Uh, Cider Fest. It's like a festival that um, the two towns, like the brewery, puts on every year in Corvallis. Um, and I wasn't 21 at the time, so we get on the bus to go there, and I am you know, absolutely shitting my pants the entire time. And I remember we were in 
the in the line and told him like, ah, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, you'll be getting, you know, what's the worst could happen? You'll be, you'll get in and like his like deep Logan voice. Another fun memory of Logan I have is when he decided to play a prank on another house. I remember this so well because it was on one of Corvallis's few pleasant nights. Warm nights in Corvallis, they spawn chaos, especially for a less than sober Logan Ross. Imagine my surprise when Logan, accompanied by a few of the younger gentlemen in our house, came running through the back door at top speed. Before I could turn around, two trucks fully loaded with angry Sigma Kai's pulled into our back driveway. Accompanied with these Sigma Kai's were multiple large pots, industrial kitchen sized pots of last night's dinner. We get up to the, to the security guard, he like puts me in the middle of like our friend group. And he's like, you know, just, I'll just like, I'll give my ID first. You just flash yours, you go in, like, it'll be fine. Like, don't worry, like I got this under control. So he talks to the guy, I flash my ID, dart right in. And then he gets into, the rest of our group gets in. And <laughs> Logan looks at me and he goes, never in a million years did I think that, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> didn't start off the the festival just right. Maybe four or five, six ciders later, um, Logan decides that he was ripped off from this festival because instead of the plastic cups, um, everyone else got them like they were like little metal cups with a carabiner on the side for the handle. And Logan not only wanted one for himself, but one for everyone in our group that didn't get one. After a brief discussion and trying to calm them down, I learned that Logan and a few of the members of their house had decided that on this beautiful Corvallis evening, it would be a good idea to redecorate and change the feng shui of their, let's call it, front lawn furniture. After calming them down, and promising them that the people responsible would return the following day to right the wrongs, and they left. And the next day, Logan and those members went back to the house, and I can't speak highly enough of the fact that Logan was there with that beautiful smile, ready to fix anything he had, not broken, but altered. Logan had a strategy where we would go and find a cup, was sitting on a table, and we would stake it out for, you know, four or five minutes, see if anyone would come back and claim it. And if not, like, it was fair game. So, the first one uh, was pretty funny. So Logan found his cup, grabbed it, and then clipped the carabiner part onto his belt loop. And the first one was funny. Cup, like, five or six was hilarious. <laughs> and every time Logan would get one of these cups, he would clip it onto his belt loop. And then after, you know, a bunch of them that really started to like, you know, weigh his pants down, and so then they would swing on side to side, and I swear, they sounded just like a cowbell clanking. <laughs> and so after clipping like a lot of these um, to almost every belt loop on his pants, we like, go home, and we each get one of these mugs, and I still have mine, and it even has dents on the side uh, from the cups clanking together. <laughs> Uh, my favorite story of Logan is probably when both of us were at the house during the renovations and while both of us had to deal with so much BS because of all the stuff we had to fuck to deal with um, in regards to the painters and certain members and everything like that but being able to like like work with Kelly and being able to like confide each other and stuff like that with with all this bullshit we had to deal with and find laughs when we could and uh, one moment in particular that stands out to me about you, um, and it actually goes back to when I first met you. Trevor's graduation party, uh, when we were playing wiffle ball, drinking, having a great time. Um, you're just you're just a standout guy. You're somebody that I could, at that time, definitely see myself being friends with, and I'm, I'm so happy that we've been able to develop into a friendship. Is the time where me, Owen, Logan, and Ryan played rock band all day and all night, when it basically just came out and and we were grinding on the guitar, grinding on the drums, and also singing as well. Um, we rotated a ton, so that was just a really great memory. In spring of 2019, when we decided to go to Shasta, uh, Logan and I were on one end of the island of the boat that we were on, and Jacqueline's boat was on the far other end of the island, um, which was quite a distance, and we decided to, uh, we'll call it, borrow some tubes from a uh, from an adjacent boat and sail all the way around the island over to over to Jacqueline's boat. 
Um, just a moment that I remember very fondly and I think led to us being very close friends. So I would say my favorite memory is playing cornhole outside as a family, just hanging out, doing our own thing and, you know, just being together. Um, one of my favorite memories of him was when we were camping out on Lake about eight years ago and he wanted to go paddle boarding with me but I was a little nervous because I'd never been before but I ended up going with him and we spent two hours out there looking at all the ducks and the fish and just talking. It was really fun and now I love to go paddle boarding. Going to the beach in the summer, throwing a football or frisbee, um, but for some reason the one that sticks out in my mind is working our butts off on our anatomy projects and having to go to war with our teacher a little bit. Uh, definitely didn't make it easy on us. Favorite memories gotta be our 7 a.m. early mornings at Timberline. Maybe putting down a couple cervezas, listening to some good music, and uh, having some really quality talks up there. I think when we went to McMinimums for my birthday and we played air hockey, or just his laugh, any time of day. Um, it's hard to pick one favorite story of Logan because he was such an influential part of my life and a lot of the decisions that I made. Uh, he welcomed me onto the cross country team alongside him and introduced me to the best friends that I've had throughout high school. Uh, welcomed me into the fraternity that I joined and introduced me to the best friends that I've had uh, in college and will probably keep throughout my life. So he is pretty responsible for a lot of, if not all of my favorite memories in life. But if I had to narrow it down to one recent favorite memory, uh, last spring we took live goldfish shots together in the bathroom of the fraternity. And that was a ride. <laughs> my favorite memory is when we went to Portland to the ping pong bar and we all got a little drunk and we played some ping pong and we found out how good Logan is at ping pong and he kicked our ass but it was very fun we had a great time but I remember when you were little and you were at our house and you had had this lamp that was just really hot and you touched that little lamp and you said hot and you know you never went back to that lamp again guess you're a quick learner um, when I was teaching him how to drive um, one of the times we, we left the house, we were in my 2003 Honda Accord uh, stick shift. He learned on a manual, good job buddy. And uh, we, we leave the house, we take a ride on Turley and then a ride on Church. And we hit Church, boom, he hits the gas. He's picking up speed rapidly and he's, he's on the go. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Logan, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm picking up speed, I'm getting my speed up. I'm like, okay. So I, I look over to the speedometer, I'm like, Dude, Logan, you're going 50. He's like, yeah, I gotta get, my, I gotta keep my speed up. I'm like, Logan, the speed limit's 45. You're going over the speed limit. And he stops and kind of looks at me. And he's like, I thought you had to go 45. So, <laughs> anyways, funny moment. And my favorite story with uh, you and me is when we were really drunk one night. We uh, went over to Sigma Chi and flipped the table over, and we went back to the house and. We thought that we were going to get in really big trouble, but it wasn't much trouble at all because we just flipped a table. Pretty harmless. Um, okay, if you had to describe Logan in only one word, what would the word be? Jacqueline. If I had to describe Logan in one word, it would be calm. My word for Logan is low expectations. Not that I have them of him, but that when I think of that, he just, uh, he makes me smile. Word, it would probably be genuine. Uh, he really wants to kind of know how you're doing in your life and kind of get down and, you know, really cares about other people. I would say that you are high spirited because you're always coming in with a smile on your face. Even when things are having a bad day or just like not looking up sometimes, you always find ways to stay positive and take the best out of every situation. So. Yeah, probably Ross Man. Ross Man, one word, no space, yeah. no dash? No, just Ross Man. Okay. I'd describe you in one word, it would be dependable. I would describe Logan as honorable. It would most definitely be honesty. Whatever he does, he does to the best of his ability and he does it the right way. He tells people how everything is and I really respect him for that. I was looking for the one word, if it exists in any language. 
that describes the kind of man where you meet them and you just know that they're of such good moral standing and character that you can't afford to let them out of your life. And it's a Yiddish word. You're a mensch, Logan. I could think of a word to describe him. I think I would say loyal. Well, if I describe him in one, one word, it would probably be hardworking. Reliable. One word that I would say that is Logan in a nutshell is he's ambitious. It would be kindness or being kind. He's always been super kind and, and thinking of others and, and that's one trait I really, really, really respect and love about him. Um, if I could uh, uh, use one word to explain you, it'd be reliable. You're always there, man, always on those calls. You always showed up when nobody else did for me. Uh, so thank you, man. He's definitely composed. Um, no matter how frustrating or stressful a situation can be, Logan is uh, always the level-headed one and the calming presence in the room. I'm gonna have to go with two, and it's badass gentleman. If I can describe him in one word, definitely have to be GOAT. Greatest of all time. Uh, definitely one of the best guys I know. One word that I think best describes Logan is cringy, only because he once said that whenever he sees me, his main goal is to make me cringe before he leaves. And he does, and I've realized that it is not that hard for him to do now. It'd be genuine or authentic or real. I guess that's multiple words, but all same synonyms. Logan is joyful. Logan is kind. Logan is extremely happy. Logan is compassionate. Logan loves showing his Washington Mutuals. If I had to describe Logan in one word, it would be robotic. My word for Logan, I think I would go with uh, calculated. Um, he's uh, very, very level-headed, calculated in what he does, um, takes time to think about things, um, the smile on his face, and just a, a real, real cool and calculated demeanor. If I had to describe Logan in one word, I'd say he's adventurous. You know, he's always going out and finding a new place to be and a place to explore and you know, document his life there. Uh, I want to say happy birthday, and I got everybody here with me in Lithuania to say happy birthday to you too. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan! <laughs> Happy flipping birthday. Happy birthday. Let's go down to Ben soon so I can actually hang out with you guys down there and have, have some drinks. <laughs> Celebrate your birthday. Whoop, whoop. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Logan, happy birthday, dude. Hope you have a great one today. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Logan. Logan. And then, AJ, you can do yours now. Happy birthday, brother! <laughs> <laughs> I sure love him. I love you, Log. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, Logan. Love you, brother. Happy birthday. Can't wait to see you again, man. Happy birthday. But anyway, you're one of the most thoughtful people I know, and we hope you have a great birthday, and hope to see you really soon. Bye-bye. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy birthday, brother. You have a great birthday. I hope 25 treats you very well. Thank you. Happy birthday, Logan. Love you, man. Love you, Logan. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Logan. I love you, buddy. Yeah, happy birthday, Logan. 25 is an awesome year. I get to experience it three days before you, but love that we're still connected really well and, and can't wait for all that's to come. 25 is a big one. Happy birthday. Let's go drink some beers. Just wanted to say happy birthday, brother, and uh, I'll see you soon. Happy birthday, Logan. Happy 25th. Logan, wish you a happy 25th and get a beer. Uh, happy birthday, Logan. Uh, happy 25th. Uh, I can't wait to see you. Happy birthday, Logan. Yeah, happy birthday, Logan. Uh, happy, happy 25th. We love you. We're proud of you. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Happy 25th birthday, Logan. I love you completely. There he is. <laughs>